Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. We're coming to you from Washington's nicest indoor shooting facility. Of course, that's Security Gun Club right here in Woodinville, Washington. Hey, I'm going to try to do this uh, once again. I tried it once before. It's kind of an instant replay of a real incident. Last time, YouTube got really pissed off at me for showing stuff. Hopefully, they're going to be a little nicer to me on this one. But when I saw it, it was under the preface that, hey, the shooter was not going to be charged with a crime, which I'm normally like, hey, that's probably a good call. Then I had an opportunity to watch the video, and I was like, really? He's not getting charged with anything here. Floated it out to a few other people that I really, whose opinions I really respect, and I kind of got similar feedback from all of them. I'm like, wow, this is kind of interesting. And there may be some politics in play. We're not really going to get into that here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the video. We're going to put some ground rolls out there, play the video, and then I want to hear from you guys. What do you think? So today, let's spend a few minutes and let's talk about good shot or bad shot. Does this guy deserve to go to jail? Okay, hey, listen, before we get going too far down the road, we're going down. Proud to announce that this video is being brought to you by Legal Heat. That's right, America's largest educator of concealed carry classes. Legal Heat has now taught over a quarter million Americans since they started doing this in 2005. Now, listen, if you live outside the People's Republic of the State of Washington, go ahead and visit them at mylegalheat.com. That's mylegalheat.com. Find a class that you want to sign up for. And if you do, use the promo code Washington Gun Law. That's Washington Gun Law, all one word, and you will receive. 15% off. But for the hometown crowd here stuck behind the Iron Curtain in the People's Republic of Washington, well, hey, the folks at Legal Heat feel your pain and they actually want to give you something for free. So right now until the end of August, if you find a class at any one of these locations right here and you want to sign up, well, you got to use the promo code WGL free because if you do that, you will receive that class absolutely free. Whether it's a beginner class or a very advanced training class, you will receive that class absolutely free. So for more information, no matter where you live in the United States, go ahead and visit my good friends at Legal Heat at mylegalheat.com. Okay, so the incident we're talking about took place a couple of months ago in San Francisco, California. It involves a shoplifting. I know that's crazy. It involves a loss prevention officer who actually is trying to prevent a loss. It came out, the story came out, the video came out, and I found it on a story that said that the individual that you're about to see here will not be charged. When I saw the headline and the kind of the, the filler in below it, I was like, hey, that's probably really good news. When I looked at the video, though, I was kind of like, wow, that's... That's, you, that's interesting. And so what I want you to take a look at is what happens here. Now we're gonna get a couple of ground rules in place, okay? Under almost all states, including Washington State, you have the right to use any reasonable force necessary to defend yourself, somebody else in your presence, or property. Okay, the force you use, however, has to be reasonable and proportional to the force you're trying to repel. So when we're talking about someone trying to steal property, we don't get to use a tremendous amount of force and we sure don't get to use lethal force because at no point is a person ever in danger. Now, if the would-be thief suddenly turns his ire onto the loss prevention officer, well, now things change, don't they? And then we can use any reasonable force necessary to defend ourselves. And if we become in a, a place in a situation where we are now in imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury, almost all states at that point are going to authorize the use of lethal force, okay? If that's our ground rules, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the video. There's no audio. I'm going to kind of narrate over the top. And then we're going to talk about a few things, and then I want to hear what you have to say. So without further ado, let's go to the replay. Okay, so we can see the would-be thief trying to get away here, and clearly the loss prevention officer's not. And, and away we go. Now, I will say that this is a lot of force that's being used on a would-be shoplifter already. Um, and it would appear that the loss prevention officer probably instigated some of this conduct, although obviously the first aggressor here is the shoplifter. Now, at this point, it looks like LPO is winning this fight. Uh, he's got him in a chokehold, and it looks like he's a little bit stronger uh, than him. It looks like he's probably a little bit superior in this particular scuffle. He's on top of him now. He's got him in a chokehold. As you can see, the items that were about to be stolen have now all been dropped. They're laying there in the bottom left of the screen. Um, they lay there for a while, and I'm kind of figuring, oh, hey, is he going to choke him out here or something? But eventually, he lets him up. Now, the thief goes over and grabs the bag, says something to him, and as he's talking to him, and it's blurred here, but you can see the results here, okay? You can see what happened here. 
And let's go back and take a look at that. As you can see, the guy's backing out of the door. He's certainly saying something to him, and we don't know what he's saying. Uh, but uh, as you can see, the LPO does discharge his weapon. He strikes him uh, center mass. And unfortunately, the individual did not survive that shooting. Interesting also how many people are just walking by, not getting involved in any way, shape, or form when they were scuffling around on the ground. And now this poor guy's down here bleeding out here. And uh, as you can see, nobody really, really wants to be involved in it. Now, that is a pretty terrible situation and one horrible way to get yourself killed. That's for sure. What bothers me a little bit about this is that it would appear that at the very beginning of the conflict, the loss prevention officer uses what I think is reasonable force to stop the would-be shoplifter from getting out the store. And I think the shoplifter at that point decides to get physical with the LPO and it's kind of like game on at that point. Now there is a point here where what we are trying to do is stop the loss of these items. These items are laying in the store. What I find also interesting then is, is after he the LPO gets off of the guy, and candidly, he had him kind of pinned. He had him right there in a chokehold, as you can see right here. Um, for whatever reason, he lets him get up, he lets him grab the bag, and he's walking out the door. Now, what bothers me the most is, is at the point that the, these two are standing in this position right here, the would-be shoplifter has a bag. I don't know if the stuff he's got in the bag is his or stuff he's stolen. I don't know. I don't really care. But he is backing out of the store at that point. Now, I don't see him reaching for anything, but that doesn't mean that he's not. I certainly cannot hear what he's saying. And he could have said something that could have placed the loss prevention officer in reasonable fear that he was an imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury. However, we have to acknowledge that the circumstances here are a little weak as he backs out that's when the loss prevention officer draws he fires almost immediately it's not a particularly difficult shot he does strike him center mass and again unfortunately the shoplifter does die now did the shoplifter deserve to die i don't know some of you are going to get the comment on that and i'm sure you'll have colorful comments he absolutely deserved to be stopped and confronted by the loss prevention officer there is no doubt about that and so i believe that the loss prevention officer's initial contact and the subsequent scuffle that ensued because it is highly likely that it was caused by the shoplifter i think that everything up to this point the loss prevention officer is absolutely within his lawful rights okay and remember under most state law he's going to have additional authority as a loss prevention officer above what you and i may have as average citizens my beef here my concern here i should say is this moment in time right here because i don't know what happens and there is a very short list of things that could happen in that brief window of time with him standing there backing out of the store that would actually justify the firing of that weapon now here's the crazy thing this is san francisco and we know that they don't particularly enforce some laws but other laws are entirely different and this is one of those horrible individuals who had the audacity to stand their ground and defend themselves and those are the types of people which are typically prosecuted however as I mentioned earlier, the story was is that this individual, the loss prevention officer, would not be charged. Now, I'm not advocating for any charges. And again, I can't advocate one way or the other because I don't know the whole story. There could be a lot more to this. And if there is and anyone wants to share those details, my ears are wide open. I would love to know every single detail and context about this case. So I really want to hear from all of you. What do you think? Good shot, bad shot, does the dude deserve to go to jail? Now, I want to put a caveat on all of this, okay? I am basing my very limited opinion on the limited information that I have. If somebody has more information to help put everything in context, maybe there was something that was said, maybe there's something that's known about this individual, there is always more to the story than what I have right now. That could certainly change my opinion. I'm asking all of you, though, to judge it on what we know right now. So is it a good shot? Is it a bad shot? And does this dude deserve to go to jail? Put the comments down there and we'll probably do a follow up video and kind of highlight some of the cool things that you all have to say. Now, in the meantime, if you got any questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to contact Washington Gun Law by now. But if you don't, that's OK. That information is right down there in the description box. Now, in the meantime, I do want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful 
and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.